G'day everyone, my name's Shannon and I'm an artist. Today I'm going to be showing you how I turned three Disney or Pixar animal slash creature designs into human guys. And what do these three fine gentlemen have in common? Now, we're sexy! It's time for some art shenanigans. <laughs> I'm sorry if my voice is extra annoying today. I have a cold this week. <laughs> the first thing I did was rough in his little smirk. I knew that it would be tricky to try to make a human shaped face reminiscent of Raja because humans are obviously quite vertical and stretched out. Raja's this compact little kiggy. <laughs> so I thought it would help if I splayed out his cheek fluffs, sideburns and beard a bit to give him some more width. I also really pushed those eyebrow muscles up there because I think they're really essential to his character. And they also make him look more cat-like in general, I think. I also tried to make the faces of his nose similar to the way that his muzzle was designed. I just wanted it to look more like his little cat nose. Before we get to the thirsty comments, there was one comment I got even more. Raja is a girl. That I know, Jasmine's tiger is a girl. Raja effemina. Isn't Raja a girl? Raja is just a girl tiger. Um, no, but he's not though. <laughs> but uh, I mean, maybe he was in the live action ish one. But yeah, sorry. Sorry, people. And now to the thirsty comments. I'd like to preface all of this by saying that I didn't plan for him to be attractive. I didn't plan to get comments like I'm about to read to you. They are. Uh, I'm not even into men. This just happened. I don't know. I don't know the rules. Oh no, he's hot. He has no business being this fine, please. Oh, he's handsome. Looks like the sugar daddy I wish in my life. Okay, but Raja could get it. Oh no, Raja is the daddy. Hmm. This is another thing. I don't know if people realize, what does this say about me? I drew the tiger kind of sexy and I don't know what that means. I, I don't know what that means. I think that maybe a lot of it is the salt and pepper. I think people really like an older man with the salt and pepper. And he looks big and strong, but also cuddly. Like he's gonna protect you, but he's gonna be good to you. Just to add another layer of making that awkward, someone pointed out that he kind of looks like Aaron Blaze, who is old enough to be like my, at least my father. But anyway, so <laughs> I also had noticed it kind of looks like Aaron Blaze. I didn't intend that either. I don't know, man. This lovely commenter also pointed out the castle reflection in the glasses. I had actually forgot that I did that. <laughs> but yeah, you can sort of subtly see the reflection of the Sultan's palace. Next up, we're doing Pumba. <coughs> My lord, was this guy a journey? Look at his face here, it's shocking. <laughs> oh my god, this poor gremlin of a man. I, I struggled because he has those really sharp cheekbones and still is very round. You can see here I was also going to add to moan, but that doesn't end up in this video either. But yeah, it was really hard to balance the sharp, tiny features with his really big, round, double chin and that he's supposed to be a rotund character. It was just, it was, my brain and my hand couldn't come to an agreement. Trying to make sense of his facial features was hard too because I wanted him to be an African character because he lives in Africa, but the very low down and very pointy nose in my head didn't really fit the conventional, generally expected appearance of an African character. And then I was like, does he have eyebrows or is that just lumpy eyebrow bits? I don't know. That's not going to help me make him cute. That's, I don't know. In the end, I don't know how happy I am with the design, but I think he does end up much better looking than he started off. <laughs> Please let me know what you think. People were a bit divided about my choice to put his tusks as sort of piercing things. What are they called? Those spacer thingies that put a big hole in your ears. Some people thought that was dumb because the piercings should have been close to his mouth. And others thought it was cool because it was more similar to the silhouette of the character and that's what I was going for. I also thought it made more sense. I don't know many people who would get such a huge piercing that close to their mouth, but I mean, Whatever. <laughs> I also pointed his upper lip, making his upper lip thicker than the lower one, hoping that it would be more evocative of his pointy pig nose. 
Here are some thirsty comments. Firstly, Pumba definitely turned out to be a beautiful, beautiful man, but also extremely kind looking. Yeah, he's very handsome. Pumba can pull though. <laughs> yeah, there it is. <laughs> I don't know if his features look African enough. What do you think? That, that I don't know. Maybe this is exactly what someone you know looks like. Maybe this is what you look like. Let me know if you look exactly like Pumba and you think I nailed. <laughs> Last but not least, Sully Wally. Also Mike and Boo, but obviously they're not they're, they're not daddy, so they don't really count. They're also they're just also here. Like Pumba. Mike went on a frickin' journey. Look at this little goblin of a man. I really wasn't sure what to do with him. I had no idea. I, if I were to do this again, I would go for more conventional comedian shape, you know? But I just wanted him to be this little round man. But doing that, making him an actual little ball of a man while also giving him twiggy limbs. And then I was like, is he bald? Or does he just have some kind of hipster do to cover up his other eye? His colours fortunately came together quite easily. I gave him a sort of more olivey skin tone because green and olives, it just, it made, it look, it, it made sense in my head. <laughs> Sully ended up being inspired by Viking-y aesthetic, you know, those kind of hot bearish guys. Honestly, Sully looks so much like an English teacher. I had Mr. Edie, if you're somehow watching this, <laughs> <laughs> this isn't some kind of commentary i like i said before i'm not even into dudes i just for whatever reason all of the guys end up looking a certain type of way and there's always comments about it i mm. the comments i got about these guys interestingly some of them were thirsty but they were a specific kind of thirst Hit him. They look awesome. Sully is a badass. Embarrassed face. Hearts face. Hot. Beautiful. Perfect. And I have the hots for Sully. There it is. <laughs> Why did I think that Mike and Sully look like two gay dads with their daughter? They look like a cute gay couple. I love it. They are dating. Shut up. <laughs> I think Mike has one eye infection. <laughs> I suppose that one's not thirsty or um, shippy. I, I just liked that one. We're coming to a point now with Mike, where I'm actually quite liking his face. I like how his eyebrows turned out. I think his eyes, eye is pretty huge, which suits the character, buggy, buggy eyes, but he still looks like an adult to me. That's, I guess, up to, it's a matter of opinion. Pretty lazy choice to just go with a hoodie there, but it seemed fitting at the time. If I were to do this again, I think I'd give him some sort of disheveled, business business casual kind of kind of greasy business casual <laughs> i think i'd ideally like to have another shot at this trio again sometime i quite like how sully's face turned out too actually i like his narrow forehead big brows this sort of cat-like nose to represent sully's spots i gave him tattoos Someone pointed out I could have used vitiligo, and I agree, I could have, but his body was mostly pale with patches of a darker colour. And generally, when you see vitiligo, it's the person's predominantly got a darker skin tone with areas of light. I guess that's early on, isn't it? I don't know, in my head it just didn't make sense at the time. <laughs> I've given Sully lots of braids and wrapped threads and stuff like he's just he's fully embracing that hipstery viking -y look <laughs> he's got a bit of a dad bod he's, he's muscly but it's the muscles are hiding under the squish to really lean into the vibe i gave him black nail polish and a sort of spotty circly pattern on his t-shirt to further enforce the whole he's a spotty dude thing and i gave him a jacket over his shoulders that has a fairy bit which hopefully will be evocative of the original character being fluffy, but also viking -y cloaks and stuff. It gives him an even squarer silhouette, which I think is, I think that's helpful. I gave Boo a little monster hoodie because that seemed appropriate, but not quite as intricate and detailed as her costume in the movie. 
Here are my three mans. Be sure to let me know which one of these three guys you think is the best. Are any of these your cup of tea or are the people who follow me on TikTok and Instagram completely crazy? <laughs> Thank you to everyone who supports me, specifically my Patreons, Aelden, Reese, and Kerry. I have two tiers on Patreon. The very top tier that has all of the rewards in it is only 10 Australian dollars. That's like 660 in American money. I also have an online store where I sell cute stickers and prints, including a very popular Aristocats one. You know, ladies do not start fights, but they can finish them. Uh... <laughs> I also have this collection of little gay pride lions. You put them in a lion and then they're like a pride march because they're, because they're lions and they're a pride. We just reached 20k on TikTok. I also have a Discord, but I have no idea what to do with it. Please help me. I also stream on Twitch. My time, it's 10 a.m. Monday, Australian Eastern Standard Time. For my American viewers, that's 8 p.m. Sundays, EDT, New York time. All my links are in the description. Thank you so much for sticking around and for any likes and subs and all of that. <laughs> I'll see you next time for more Arch Nanigans.